Community delegates and, Ch and Chief Roberto Barrero of the United Confederation of Taino People and their community delegates to start us off with an opening prayer. Onilwe Nikich Ajwesti. I am Sachem Hawkstorm of Scatterco First Nations, and what I said is I am grateful to you, my relatives. Um, I want to welcome everybody uh, to our territory, and I bring welcome from the Lenape, from Chief Perry, from the Rampo, and um, I'm here with my brother from uh, the Taino of Puerto Rico, and we're going to do a quick prayer and a song. Uh, after I'm done with the prayer, I'm going to do the four directions and call in some good energy for what we're trying to do today. So I'm going to say it in my language, but you guys understand. Yaminan Manimek Anishik Aninik Bonak Yaminan Manimek Anishik Aninik Shawanak Yaminan Manimek Anishik Aninik Tachkamak Yaminan Manimek Anishik Aninik Wampanak Yaminan Manimek Anishik Aninik Wanted Manitou and Yaminan Manimek Anishik Aninik Hapkin Nagak Anishi relationship with Mother Earth and saying that we're here to serve, right? That's what it's all about today. Thank you. 
Thank y'all so much for getting us started off with that powerful song and that beautiful prayer. And so we're going to start off with our, our theme chant for the day. What time is it? It's time to rise. What time is it? It's time to rise. What time is it? It's time to rise for climate, jobs, and justice. What time is it? Jobs and Justice. My name is Denise Patel. I'm with the People's Climate Movement New York, your host for the day. I'll be one of the MCs. And my name is Patrick Houston with New York Communities for Change, and I'll be your co-MC. So first, thank you all for being here today. We are very excited to be the first city in the U.S. to kick off a wave of actions across the world. Yeah. There are over 800 actions in 90 countries bringing together thousands of people to rise up for climate, jobs, and justice. Yeah. We're doing this because we know climate change is real and it's impacting our health and our lives every day. We have the solutions. We need a rapid transition to 100% renewable energy that is rooted in justice and equity. That's right. We need to stop yeah. all fossil fuel infrastructure. Yeah. And we need to hold corporate polluters responsible for the damage they have caused. Yeah. It's not too late to fix the problem, but the political will is lacking. But we know the people's will is strong, yeah. right? Yeah. year, Mayor de Blasio and our city comptroller, Scott Stringer, who's in the crowd somewhere, uh, made New York City a global leader on divestment, cutting $5 billion from the fossil fuel industry and suing major oil companies like ExxonMobil and Shell for climate damages. And in case you missed all the action on Twitter yesterday, uh, we also are really excited to announce that just yesterday, Comptroller Stringer uh, took a stand against the Williams Natural Gas Pipeline. <laughs> For the city of New York, he's the highest level elected official to do so, and we are ex really ecstatic that he's doing this. We thank him for his leadership. We definitely are, because we are in a critical moment in history. I mean, we are seeing unprecedented damage to the planet, this is damage, I'm sorry, this is damage that threatens the safety and the progress of so much and so many. I mean, just in the last few months alone, we've seen record-setting wildfires in California. We've seen the Arctic burning. We've experienced punishing heat waves right here in New York. Here in New York State, where we receive only 4% of our electricity from solar energy and wind energy. Boo. This is not sustainable. This is not sustainable. This is not inevitable. And this is not acceptable. Now, now there are fair alternatives. There are fair alternatives that can cut pollution Sorry, that can cut pollution and create jobs and protect our health. Woo! So while Trump is protecting the profits of the rich, we demand local and state electeds to protect the health and the well-being of the many. Woo! And so we're calling Governor Cuomo. It's time to rise. Mayor de Blasio, it's time to rise. All elected officials, it's time to rise for climate, jobs, and justice. Cuomo, de Blasio, it's time to rise. Elected, it's time to rise. For climate, jobs, and justice. I say Cuomo, it's time to rise. De Blasio, it's time to rise. Elected, it's time to rise. For climate, jobs, and justice. Woo!
we have a few announcements. One, our movement definitely people powered. You're all showing it. We are also people funded. So we have some great volunteers walking around in orange vests with buckets to collect donations. And if you can spare some cash, drop it in the bucket. Very grateful. A public health announcement. Restrooms are located behind us. Well, actually, those are locked up. So the restrooms are in that building over there. Um, and you can pass them by as we march on our way out of the park. There are also water fountains available throughout the park, so you can refill all of those great water bottles you brought with us. Right? Right. And a couple more things. The power of today is not only in this moment while we're all here in this park, but it's also how much can we amplify this and how much can we continue this fight in the coming days. And so I'm going to need everybody to pull out your phones. Pull out those cell phones right now. All right, I don't see enough cell phones. Pull out your cell phones. I'm serious. we got to carry this action beyond today. Pull out those cell phones. Thank you. All right, now, a couple things. First off, last couple months, we've been calling Governor Cuomo every Monday, demanded that he stop all fossil fuel infrastructure in our state, move to 100% renewable energy, and each week we highlight a particular problem, a particular fossil fuel project that needs to be stopped. Join us. Text one word, Cuomo Mondays, to 69866. That is one word, Cuomo Mondays, to 69866. I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to move on to that second ass. You ready? Everybody here got some Instagram, some Facebook, some social media? Yeah, I think so. So that's Amplified Us as we're marching through the streets today. So tweet, post on Facebook using hashtags rise and why that's hashtag rise and why no spaces the other hashtag get them phones out the other hashtag is why we rise that's hashtag why we rise spelled out why spelled out why <laughs> w-h-y and then last um there are so many groups here today we are pushing for um, action on so many different levels from so many different groups, and you can get plugged in. So there are people walking through the crowd with a simple one-pager on next steps and how you can get involved. So look out for those leaflets. If those people are passing out leaflets, raise your hands and continue to go through the crowd. So, I've got one more question for y'all. Are you registered to vote? So you know, there are two election days coming up. One week from today, on Thursday, September 13th, is New York's primary election day. And on November 6th, it's the general election. So, in case anybody here is not registered to vote, you should know that the registration deadline is October 12th and you should get on that. And if you want to help us turn out voters on Thursday of next week or on election day in November, look out for the folks from the Sunrise Movement and other groups in the crowd. There they are. Um, they've got sign-up sheets for folks who want to volunteer. So keep an eye out and definitely sign up. Now, before we bring up our speakers, we want to share a few acknowledgments. Um, because PCM New York couldn't provide an equal setting for candidates for the November election, which is required by law, we've had to rescind our invitation to Ms. Ocasio-Cortez to speak at this event. Yeah, we warmly welcome her and all other New Yorkers to stand with us as part of the People's Climate Movement. But we are happy to have a number of local elected officials and candidates joining us today. Uh, Comptroller Stringer is here. As is Councilmember Brad Landers. Thank you. And we hope that any other elected officials who maybe didn't check in with us beforehand, and everyone who didn't show, who didn't come today, hears our message loud and clear today. 
We have over 100 organizations and many individuals partnered with us to make this event a success, and we could not have done it without them. So, I'm excited to introduce our first speaker, Judy Sheridan Gonzalez. She's an emergency room nurse from the Bronx and the president of the New York State Nurses Association, Nice Nice Not. Nice Not has been a leader in the trade union movement, fighting for a clean, safe planet, a just transition to renewable, publicly owned energy, and created the New York Recovery Network to send nursing and medical brigades to communities that are on the front lines of climate disasters. Welcome, Judy. Thank you. So is it hot enough for you? Imagine if winter was like this. That's what we're facing if we don't do something now, right? As nurses, we care for victims of climate change, and if you want to add to our statistics, we have these red armbands. If anything happens to you today, we will administer first aid to you. But what happens as a result of climate change to the health of our population? We get heat strokes. We see wildfires and the impact of wildfires, burns, and injuries. Asthma and emphysema from diesel fuels and incinerators and treatment plants affecting our babies and grandmas. Chronic respiratory problems from black mold left over from floods and hurricanes. Serious bacterial infections from dehydration and foul water. Long after hurricanes leave, we, these are the results of what we see, and these things are chronic. We see severe depression, mental illness, because people lose their homes, their jobs, their livelihood. There's poor repair, poor recovery, and people, we have seen a lot of suicides. But the government seems to have amnesia between these disasters, and I would like to call them unnatural disasters, not natural disasters, because they are not natural. We do have some victories. Everyone know about the CPV pipeline? We did have a little victory. We have to celebrate our victories, but we have to remain vigilant, because those billionaires, like the Koch brothers, you know who they are? I love crowds like this. <laughs> They're, they're really anxious to destroy everything that we have, whether it's deregulation, destroying our unions, privatization, and pushing for these fossil fuels with this fantasy of what they call clean gas. Is, clean, is gas clean? No. We know that it's not clean. So while we're here in the global north, uh, we're suffering, particularly our communities of color and our poorer communities, it's far more ominous in the global south. I don't know how many of you remember the hurricanes that hit the south a year ago. In Puerto Rico, we went there six times to deliver first aid with many of our volunteers. And if it wasn't for the people on the ground, from the island and from here, volunteering more than 5,000 people would have died. I would love for you to join us on September 20th, the anniversary, in Union Square, 6 o'clock, not only to mourn the victims, but to demand changes in the way we deal with climate, in privatization, and the austerity visited upon the people of Puerto Rico. Because I assure you, what happens there will happen here in our debt-ridden cities. So rather than starving public utilities, all efforts have to be made for a transition rapidly into sustainable energy production models controlled by our communities, not by profit-oriented companies who should finance such changes through reparations. That's the only thing that I think that they're good for right now, is to pay for the changes that we need. So, before it's too late, let's change the system, not the climate. Change the system, not the climate. Change the system, not the climate. Thank you. Next up, we have Petra Luna with Make the Road. Make the yeah. Make the Road New York builds power of immigrant and working class communities to achieve dignity and justice. Petra is an immigrant mom who has been raising her family in Bushwick for the last 20 years. She and both her children suffer from chronic asthma. And Bushwick is one of many low income communities in New York City, but as a neighborhood, it is above the citywide averages for rates of asthma, heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, and other chronic diseases. Petra believes that our children's health outcomes should not be determined by our income. And the climate solutions must be just and equitable. Petra is calling on Mayor de Blasio to clean up New York City's largest source of pollution, our dirty buildings. And calls, yeah, and 
calls on Governor Cuomo to fully fund the MTA and fully electrify the bus fleet. Catch y'all come on up. Buenas tardes. Gracias por estar aquí para levantar, levantarnos por el clima, empleo y justicia. Mi nombre es Petra Luna. Soy miembro de Se Hace Camino Nueva York. Estoy aquí hoy en una lucha personal y colectiva. Soy una madre inmigrante con dos hijos y he pasado los últimos 20 años viviendo y creciendo en Bushwick, Brooklyn. Mis hijos Christian y Jason han pasado la mayoría de sus vidas sufriendo asma crónica que ha obstaculizado sus vidas. Para mí y mi familia, este inhalador significa poder respirar o vivir por ahora. ¿Por qué? Cuando nosotros inhalamos, sentimos el cuerpo tembloroso, dolor de cabeza, calambres musculares y palpitaciones del corazón. En otras palabras, lo que nos ayuda ahora nos enfermará en el futuro. Mi historia no es única. Esta ciudad ha marcado muchas desigualdades, donde hay altos porcentajes de pobreza y desempleo, también hay altos índices de mala salud. Mi propia comunidad de Bushwick es un ejemplo. Bushwick está por encima del promedio en la ciudad en efectos de mantenimiento de vivienda. Contaminación del aire, obesidad, diabetes, cáncer, ataques al corazón, derrames cerebrales, asma, entre muchas otras. Esto, no es, esto es injusto para nuestras familias y estamos aquí para exigir que la ciudad trabaje para solucionarlo. Hoy luchamos porque creemos que los resultados de salud de nuestros niños no deberían ser determinados por nuestros ingresos. Si vamos a transformar esta ciudad y hacerla más equitativa y sostenible, debemos comenzar por escuchar las voces de la multitud. Transformar esta ciudad significa aprobar legislaciones que reequipen los grandes edificios en los cuales su consumo de energía hace que nuestro clima sea más cálido y a su vez el aire menos saludable. Transformar esta ciudad significa llevar nuestro MTA al siglo XXI, haciendo que nuestras infraestructuras de tránsito estén mejor preparadas para grandes tormentas y cambiar a una flota de autobuses eléctricos. Estas son algunas ideas por las cuales nos levantamos. Tenemos soluciones para el clima, empleo y justicia. Ahora necesitamos que los líderes electos hagan su trabajo. ¿Y cómo lo vamos a conseguir? Luchando, creando poder popular. Luchando, creando poder popular. Luchando, creando poder popular. Gracias. extreme weather on the way and we can expect a lot more extreme weather if we don't act on climate change seriously a lot more flooding at the same time a lot more droughts etc so real quick on the logistics youth will lead the march please respect that youth groups please begin assembling by the green flag youth groups now please begin and, and youth individuals and families please begin assembling by the green flag Community groups. This is groups like Make the Road. This is groups like NYCC. This is groups like Nija. Community groups. You will be second. Please begin assembling behind youth. Please begin assembling behind youth. All right, we're going to continue on. This march is happening. We have a couple more speakers and we're going to keep it moving and have a powerful march. Sarah Groen with 350. Come on up. And so 350, um, specifically she's with the 350 um, Brooklyn chapter, and they do a lot of local fights to stop climate change. Sarah Gurnham. Thank you, thank you. Woo! Bye everybody. All right.
three years ago under intense, great pressure from thousands of ordinary New Yorkers, Governor Andrew Cuomo banned fracking in New York. Yeah, we saw what had happened in Pennsylvania, the poisoned water, the polluted air, the fossil fuel funded politicians indifferent to the people they were supposed to serve. And we said, here, no way. We said no way, but under Governor Cuomo, we have got all the fracked gas right here, everywhere. New Yorkers are under siege from fossil fuel companies, and Governor Cuomo has been their enabler. They have been building and are building now big new frack gas fossil fuel plants like the CPV plant in uh, Orange County. They have been building and want to build more, more frack gas pipelines into and through our state, like the Spectra pipeline that now runs right past Indian Point nuclear power plant. The governor of New York has the legal authority to approve or deny these kinds of projects. And under Cuomo, it has been thumbs up. Yeah. The Williams Pipeline that has already been mentioned is a poster child for what's wrong with this picture. The Williams Company, a Tulsa, Oklahoma energy company, wants to dig a 23-mile line gash right, under our outer harbor past right, bringing frack gas from Pennsylvania through New Jersey past the sh shorelines of Staten Island, Brooklyn, and the Rockaways. If this pipeline is built, it will harm our marine animals. It will dig old industrial toxins up out of the harbor floor, PCBs, lead, into the waters where we swim. It will take a billion dollars out of our pockets. The, the Williams Company safety record, past 10 years, six deaths, 103 injuries. Critically, this pipeline, the Williams Pipeline, will accelerate climate change. Natural gas, whether fracked or not, is methane. And in the short term, methane is 84 times more powerful a greenhouse gas than is carbon dioxide. If we want to stop the rise in global temperature, if we want to protect our shoreline communities from global sea rise, if we want to dampen down the heat waves that threaten the most vulnerable around us, if we want to prevent the kinds of storms like Sandy and Maria that so devastated communities, right? we know what to do. Governor Cuomo needs to stop the Williams Pipeline and all these fossil fuel projects. Right? Yeah. This is why we're here tonight. We've got a vision of a just society, a society with good jobs, the kind that can build the energy system we need, an energy system characterized by community control, by sustainable, renewable energy, right? We need to, that's why we're rising up for climate jobs and justice. Rise up. All right. Thanks so much, Sarah. Again, youth begin collecting by the flag, community groups begin collecting behind them. Next up, we have from Global Kids, um, coming out right here, we have Mutsura Tana, and, um, I'm sorry, and Maham Rashida, for, with Global Kids. Good evening. It is truly an honor for us to be here with you all. It is especially thrilling to see so many beautiful people and passionate young people in the fight for climate justice. My name is Maham Rashida. And my name is Mansoura Tanha. We are both 16 years old and we are Muslim American immigrant women from Bangladesh. We are not only here as youth leaders representing Global Kids, but 
as young Muslim American women who too often feel neglected and isolated in our own society. It is essential for young people like ourselves to get involved in a fight for climate justice. It is important for us to be aware of all the different issues affecting our country, our world. All above, it is important not to be silenced, not to let the voice of fossil fuel industry overpower our own. Today we stand on the shoulder of giants, of social activists who have gotten to where we are today. Now young people must be on the front line of making positive change for, to protect our future. This is why we demand a rapid and a transition of 100 clean, renewable energy now. Our clean air and clean water cannot be taken for granted. We need bold climate action. Our generation is the last line of defense against climate catastrophe. Dear future generations, I'm sorry. We will not stay on the silence and we won't allow our elected officials to either we will not accept anything but real climate leadership. This movement, this challenge is huge. We recognize that. We have learned it requires a huge amount of faith, hard work, and often risk taking. So in the spirit of risk taking, today we decide to take one. And we share, we're gonna share our poetry with you all. Yeah. <laughs> At first, there was peace. Centuries of scenarity, a community filled with shade of green and blue. Then came the storms, storms beating against the tin roof over the heads of millions. Homes that took decades to build, taken away in minutes. Waves so powerful, they, waved aw they wiped away identities. The storm that flooded my grandfather village, climate injustice and world apathy have left my people and billions of other vulnerable broken. Broken in our homes, in our jobs, in our future. And then came the flames, the fire, the factory collapse. April 24, 2013 in Bangladesh, 8.57 a.m. Workers of all shapes and sizes trapped. Mothers, daughters, brothers, sisters. My very own family scrambling to contact my uncle 1,134 dead, I'm not sure if you heard me, but 1,134 dead. Their stitches are woven into the very own clothing that you wear. Capitalism and the climate. We see you. I'm Ratomake Dixie. Screams filled the streets. The news hit me, leaving me breathless and shaking. My heart cried for the innocent people in my home country of Bangladesh. Breathe in. Breathe out. What do you do? What do you do? But then there was an uproar. People of all races, ages, ethnicity coming together to embody a movement. A global movement for climate, jobs, and justice for all. We, we are, are the resistance. resistance. All right, now we got one more speaker, so it's about to get real. Yo, youth, make some noise over there. I see, I see you. That's the front of the march. So youth is going to lead community groups. Again, begin lining up. You'll start to see a big swath of orange. With that big swath of orange, line up there. You can make your way now. We got one more speaker, and Denise is going to introduce our final speaker. All right. So next up, Chris Erickson is the business manager of Local 3 of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers here in New York City. IBEW Local 3 and its 30,000 members are at the forefront of the transition to renewable energy, building a sustainable and energy efficient city for all of us. Chris, come on up. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody, brothers and sisters. Again, I'm the last speaker, and we're going to hit the road here. Last week, I was fortunate to be part of a delegation from Climate Jobs New York, comprised of New York labor leaders in conjunction with Cornell University's Worker Institute, and that would be Lara. And we visited Denmark to learn about the offshore wind industry. As you may be aware, New York State is committed to building 2.4 gigawatts of offshore wind and will be a driving force for the offshore wind industry wind industry on the East Coast of the United States. I'm encouraged and motivated by the governor's clean energy jobs and climate agenda, but at the same time, I'm torn. 
It's been four years since the People's Climate March here in New York City. And while there has been progress, we have failed to elect some who should have carried the torch of change. Trump and his appointees are moving us in the opposite direction. Other countries like Australia have followed his lead. I've been to China. I've seen the effects of a lack of regulation and a concern for the environment. I had to wear a mask in Beijing and Shanghai and I witnessed the toxic exposure that people and children are forced to endure. America cannot become a country where our children are forced to wear masks just to go to school. China is a clear example of a country putting profits before people. I knew four years ago that it would not be easy and that our fight for climate change was an economic fight. Wealthy, powerful corporate interests would not just surrender, but time is running out. The time to stand and demand change for our planet, for our lives, and most importantly, the lives of our children and our grandchildren is now. The whole human race is at risk. The world needs America to lead they are dependent on our ability to fix this. So I urge you to do the work, do what it takes to wake up and call on our fellow citizens to demand affordable, renewable energy, good sustainable climate jobs, and most importantly, a healthy planet to sustain us with clean air and clean water for all. It's been said that there are no jobs on a dead planet. Local 3 is proud to partner with the New York Urban Green Council, Align, Trade Unions for Energy Democracy, the Labor Network for Sustainability and Climate Jobs New York, and you, my brothers and sisters, united around the shared goal of combating climate change, reversing inequality by advocating for an ambitious, ambitious clean energy economy, creating good union jobs, more equitable communities, and a more resilient New York. It's our time. We will not be silent, and we must not fail. Thank you very much. All right, let's get ready. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Now, I got some, got some good news real quick. We got a group from Canada that just tells us that today, just recently, they stopped the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Now this is a huge victory because tar sands are a huge cause of climate change. Huge victory. So we're starting off real strong today. Real strong. Now we're getting in really good order over here. We have the youth up front. Youth, make some noise. Behind youth, we got community groups. Community groups, make some noise. And we're going to fill in behind them. Now what time? Justice Field Manual for free. Boom! Every little thing. 